so dusty. What's going on guys? This is Grant, also known as Gashuski on Instagram. I make lots of sports videos and other types of videos. Today I kind of wanted to highlight uh, what gear I use, um, whether that be on the field or off the field. What I started with, um, we're gonna kind of go back in time a little bit. Um, talk about the first camera I used for videography to like what I use now. It's been pretty bad out here as a sports videographer just because there's no sports being played right now, but um, it kind of leaves me to do videos like this where I don't usually get to do that that often really. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let me get the first camera I ever used for videography. I used this camera back in high school and uh, it's the Canon ADD. And I sold the camera to my sister, so I sold it to her and she she's using it for her own stuff now. Alrighty, so here it is, Canon ADD. I used to use the Canon ADD when I was in high school, like I said, so it was a good starting camera, I would say. The frame rate is held back a lot, and just like the video capabilities of it is really held back, and that's kind of the thing with, with Canon, honestly. Like, they hold back their products in comparison to like Sony or Panasonic, in my opinion, unless you're paying for the 1DX Mark III or one of those, those cameras when you're paying like $10,000. You just don't really get a good bang for your buck, so. With that being said, we have different lenses here. I think I had all these lenses. This is her lens, but I had the equivalent to it. 50 millimeter 1.8. Got the 18 to 55, and this is like the kit lens. This is the 55 to 250. I bought this for, I think, $150, a little bit less. It was a really good price for the focal length, honestly. It's not very good in low light. It zooms kind of weird, so it kind of sticks out when you zoom in. But on a crop sensor like this body right here, um, I was able to get pretty close to the action on the, on the field when I was shooting sports. I think this camera is limited to 1080, 60. With sports, I always say that it's better to get the most frame rate that you can. We'll break that down a little bit later, but it's always important to have a high frame rate just so you can slow it down in post without it looking super choppy. So that's about it with the Canon ADD. I don't know if I would recommend it. There's a little bit better options for a thousand dollars out there, but um, definitely you could you could look into it if you wanted to. Alrighty, next up here we have the GH5. So I used this, this camera for about one season or two seasons, I can't remember, but I was a senior in high school and I started filming some of the football games. I filmed a, a volleyball game actually for the first time. And that was one of the videos that I started using Final Cut Pro and that's kind of when my videos started taking off. All the qualities of it are amazing. Like I said, lacrosse community is huge. I think Owen Moy got this like right before I did, and I was like, this is a great camera, I better get it. For the lenses I use, I use the Olympus, what is this? Uh, 40 to 150 2.8. So this is like the equivalent to a 70 to 200 2.8. I think it's a little bit more if you convert it. It's a great lens, honestly. It, it let me zoom in a ton on the field. The only thing I had issues with was if I zoomed in or zoomed out while I was recording, the focus would change. So I don't know why that, that happened, but basically I would zoom out and then the focus would be off because I zoomed out. With my more expensive lenses, like on my Sony, it does not do that. So I'm not sure if it's just this lens or my lens specifically, but that's one of the things that I do not like about it. Next up, we have the Sigma 18 to 35. This is a really great lens. This is a Canon lens actually but I got the Metabones adapter. A lot of people don't know about the Metabones adapter or are kind of confused by it. What you can do, you buy this Metabones, it's, it's pretty expensive, honestly. Um, basically, you can, you can turn any Canon lens that you want into a micro four thirds lens and you can just pop it on the, the GH5 here. So you also gain some light too. So this is like 1.8, I think, for the aperture and it gets down to 1.3 or 1.4, I believe. I'm not 100% sure on that, but it gets pretty low on the aperture. So everything's a little bit more blurry, which is nice. You only get 18 to 35 uh, millimeters, so it's not very good for far away stuff, but if you're doing like close-ups before the game or something, uh, it's definitely a really great, really great lens, honestly. And if you're doing like interview work as well. I think this is the first lens I got for it. Let me take off the lens hood here. Very compact lens right here. This is a 12 to 35, but if you want to put this on a gimbal, it's really nice. The only thing that, that changes is this, so something you gotta look out for. With my gimbal specifically, I didn't really care that much and I would just zoom it. Would not recommend that because it can destroy your motor. I've never seen that happen, but as far as the body goes itself, uh, this is a pretty big body compared to like my Sony. There's a ton of options that you can do with this camera though. Um, so that's, that's one of the things I loved with it. Like I said, you can get a ton more bang for your buck if you get a different camera other than the Canon, at least for video that is. I don't know about photography for this, camera specifically, but it's it's still a great camera. Uh, so you can literally go from 10-bit to 8-bit. Um, you can do anamorphic lenses on here. Uh, the thing I love the most is probably you can do 120 frames a second 
They can maybe even do 180 frames a second, which is really nice for sports. It can slow it down so much and it's it's 1080p, but the quality is even better than this camera right here. As far as like 1080 goes, in my opinion, the slow motion is just like super buttery. I'll get into why I don't use this camera as much as the a7 III. The one thing I do love is that it has 4K 60 frames a second. So you can get the 4K resolution, which is really nice, um, really, really crisp. And then you can also slow it down too with the 60 frames a second. It's really not an option that you see on a lot of these cameras. Even the a7 III does not have that. So the only thing I do not like about this camera and why I don't use it anymore for my sports stuff is that there's no autofocus. I know a lot of people will say that manual focus is better, but my own opinion on that is that autofocusing is just, is just really better and easier for me when I'm shooting an entire football game, which can last three to four hours. I just have a lot more control and I know that my stuff is in focus and I can shoot at 2.8 and know that it's it's not gonna be blurry. That was one of the things I ran into with this is that I would notice that all my stuff is kind of a little bit out of focus and I have the focus breathing issue, like I said, with this lens. It was really disappointing to see that, honestly, when I got back and started looking at the footage. Mm -hmm. Definitely love it. I definitely would recommend it if you can afford it. It's not as expensive as some of the other cameras such as the a7 III, so um, yeah, check it out. As far as cages go, last thing. I ran this cage on it, which is built so that you run this you slide it in here and so you have this like cage right here and you can attach lots of things you have a lot of holes up here i don't know if you can see really you got some holes up here that you can attach stuff to you got some rails and then you can also screw stuff down here as well i usually put a handle on the on the top here but it's on my sony uh cage this camera is amazing definitely check it out all righty let's get into the camera I use now. So I just got done switching this camera off the tripod. So I've been filming with this the entire time. Um, this is the Sony a7 III. I love everything about it. The autofocus is so fast. Uh, it's really important for when I'm shooting sports. The autofocus can be so fast that it's, it's almost too fast to the point where it switches to the focus to someone that you don't want to focus on or something like that. So uh, there's some things I learned um, that can kind of prevent that. But other than that, it's a great feature to have. And especially like when I'm filming stuff like this, where I'm talking to the camera and I can't really see if I'm in focus or not. And this really helps with that. The lens I'm running on it right now, uh, it's the first lens I got it for it. And it's the 24 millimeter 1.4. Um, it's a Sigma. So a lot of people don't know much about Sigmas or it's not as popular, I'd say. But it's a great lens, honestly. All the lenses that I've ever had with them, especially that Sigma, 18 to 35 that I just had, they're super sharp. And I did a lot of videos where I would have to do just a lot of things where it needs to be really wide out. And with this full frame sensor on the a7 III with, paired with this, it was insane how much how much coverage I could get. And it was literally the, the best thing ever, especially since it's 1.4 aperture. So everything still has that little bit of a blur in the background. Obviously you're locked into that 24 millimeters uh, focal range, but really it's not that bad because you can crop in and post. Also, there's something that you can do on the Sony a7 III, which you can crop into APS-C sensor mode. And that kind of just gives you a little bit more zoom, uh, gets rid of that full, full frameness. So I use that when I'm using this as well because on the field, sometimes if you're uh, one end zone and the other people on the other side of the field, it's really, really hard to, to get them with just the 70 to 200 and it's almost impossible. Basically what I do is hit this little button. I have a shortcut on my camera and I can zoom in to APS-C sensor mode. It zooms it in just a little bit more and that 200 plus this, it honestly looks pretty good. It gets a little bit more fuzzy, like just a slight amount. And you really cannot tell if you're shooting 4K, but the one thing I do not like about this camera is the 1080. It does not look as nice as the GH5, I can tell you that. It's it's still a great image, honestly, but it's not it's not really the same as the, the GH5. I've seen like red and RE images and I get really jealous of that and like colleges and professional teams have those to work with. So when I'm pairing that up against this, it's a little bit sad to see that the quality is not as good, but honestly, this camera is good enough. Uh, it's really good. All right, so let's talk about this lens a little bit. Um, 70 to 200, 2.8. This is G-Master lens. It's a great lens. It's just really expensive. So I think I paid 2,400 bucks for this. If you're getting into sports videography or something like that, it's just way too much. And I, I really had to take a while to pay this back off. And I think it, it was worth it in the end because I got some great content, but just that initial cost, it's insane. Like I said, the autofocus is super fast. There's some buttons on here. I don't know if you can see that. So Kiwi was the one to show me that. I think he learned from someone else. But basically with that, you press this button and it locks it down to that 
uh, specific focus. So if anyone walks in front of the camera or something like that, it doesn't change the focus to that. And like I said, that's really important for this lens. This lens specifically, just because the autofocus is so good and it instantly switches. So that's really nice if you're tracking a player, for example. I always use these buttons because you press it in and it just stays on them the entire time until they move closer to the camera, obviously, or away from the camera, then you wanna switch that and just let it do the autofocusing itself. Um, this is a good range for just like doing highlights and stuff though, I really love it. All right, let me switch back to this camera. We'll get into the accessories. Getting into the accessories, these are the things that I use on the field uh, that are really helpful. I gotta look up what uh, mic this is real quick. <laughs> All right, so first talking about the audio, we have the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus. So this, I don't really use as much as I want to. Um, I kind of just leave it on for a little bit better audio, but honestly, it's good for vlogging or something. I don't really do that much vlogging. The nice thing is that you don't have to turn this on and off once you're done with it. So it turns off automatically and it kind of senses when you turn on your camera, which is really nice. So the battery doesn't die. It also has different gains as well. So that's really nice. Great mic right here. Next, we have the small HD right here. This is a five inch. This is what monitor I use. So basically you just plop this on top of your camera. Um, it allows you to kind of just see what's happening. Um, it's a lot easier to attract people then on the field because uh, when you don't have it, it's kind of small. You don't know if they're in focus or not. So this is really nice. I wish I had this one at the GH5 because I would be able to see a lot better when I'm manual focusing. So if you're manual focusing, I would definitely recommend getting a, a monitor. I don't know if you want to get this one just because it's a little bit pricey. I think I got it for like 50 bucks off and it was like $450. So it's kind of ridiculous, honestly. I'm not a huge fan of the price, but it is what it is. I don't use this as much either, but this is the uh, 360 camera that I have. Basically what it can do is record everything around you. You get into an app and then you can kind of pick what you want in the end. So it's really nice. You can get some really crazy effects with it. It's gonna be kind of like a special effect thing and you're gonna use it like occasionally. I think it was like 400 bucks. So you kind of just gotta determine if it's worth it or not. So what I use is a Manfrotto tripod head. Um, it's a fluid head that you can buy separately and then put it on top of this monopod. And it's important for you to use a monopod just because a lot of these universities are not gonna let you in with a tripod. Uh, just because it takes up too much space and then people can run into it. The monopod that I use, it's kind of a weird name, called Siru, I think. And basically it just adjusts. So you have these feet right here. You can open them up. And then these kind of serve as a tripod, which is really nice. It's not too stable, but gets the job done. And obviously it extends out right here. And then right here, you have the tripod head. So basically with this is that you can adjust these little knobs right here and adjust how smooth you want the movements. It's a really great head and you can use their Manfrotto tripod plates. So to finish off the video, I'm just gonna kind of read some of the questions I get most often. I put a thing on my story, so we'll see if there's any responses to that, but let me get into it real quick. All right, so first question from Derek, uh, explain what different frame rates are for. So 24 frames is really good if you're just filming um, stuff with audio or just normal, normal stuff where you don't really need to slow down the footage. Really what frame rate is about is if you wanna slow it down after, then you wanna, you wanna record in the highest frame rate possible. For my videos, I always record in 120 frames a second because you can slow down the footage down to 20%, which is insane, it's super slow. Obviously the next step up is like 240, so I still have a little bit to go on that, but 60 frames will do the job. I told you about the Canon that did that. Uh, GH5 can do 4K 60, which is pretty slow. It's, it's not amazingly slow, but it's, it just still gets the job done. And then 24 frames a second, you're not gonna be able to slow down at all. Um, I always export my projects in 24 frames a second, just because that's what the movie standard is um, in the United States. So that's what I do. Some people do 60 frames a second. It's a little bit smoother of an export. It takes a little bit more time and more space though. And then the other thing is like 30 frames a second. That can be good too, but I personally do not prefer it. What camera would you recommend to start videography? Uh, a lot of the A6000 cameras, like A6000, A6100, A6200, etc. Those are really good cameras to start off on. They're Sony cameras. You can get a lot of bang for your buck. I would say with any camera that you're starting off with, you're gonna get what you pay for. So, so like if you can afford like a nice camera, I would say go ahead and buy it and then it's gonna pay off in the end. But you just gotta know that whatever you pay for is gonna be like what it's worth. And it's not gonna be amazing if you pay like $500, for example. All right guys, thank you for watching. This is my first type of video like this. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Maybe I can do some more while we're all quarantined up in the house. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments. But yeah, I appreciate you guys watching my video and have a great day.